So I got some broken spots on my clamp rack and I recently got some more clamps that I need to fit in. So this has made me think about clamp storage. I don't remember why, but for some reason I built this out of solid wood and the grain is running this way, which means it should be really strong for snapping in this direction. But I've got all these cuts into it that go towards the wall because that's, that's the way the clamps go. And there's less strength this way, so there are some weak spots in the grain and it's snapped. So I really should be making this out of plywood. And I should be building it out of like three quarter inch plywood, but I don't actually have that much. And we're under the coronavirus lockdown right now, so I'm trying to avoid going to the store unnecessarily. And I have lots of thinner plywood, so I'm going to just glue a bunch of stuff together and make some three quarter inch plywood. It's shop furniture, it doesn't really matter. So it's a great time to experiment and see how it turns out. I did some research online and I'm mostly planning to copy uh, a plan that Mark Spagnolo, the wood whisperer put out like, oh, eight or more years ago. But still I had to modify it for my own needs and I worked that out in SketchUp and I printed out the important parts. The key dimension for me is that I'm looking at 7 16 inch wide slots. I'm going to make the slots 2 and a quarter inches deep and I'm going to space them so they are 2 and 3 eighths on center. And I'm making just one rack for 14 clamps. And yeah, I actually have more than 14 clamps, but I'm treating this as an experiment. So I'm making one, I'm going to try it out, see how I like the build and see how I like the resulting rack and then I'll decide if I'm going to make another one for the rest of the clamps. Here we go. For the back I need a piece that's uh, 11 and 3 quarter inches wide and for that I've got these three pieces of plywood. This will go the full length. These two pieces. This will give me something roughly a half inch wide. For the back it's not that critical because it's going to be against the wall. For the shelf with all the notches I need something three and a half inches wide. I have a piece of uh, sort of construction plywood here that's like almost 5 eighths. So I'm going to put a piece of eighth inch cherry on top of that. That'll glue that together. For the top shelf I'm actually going to use a piece of solid wood. I'm going to have a nice top shelf on the top of it and that way I don't worry about it sagging or anything either. Slight change of plans here. I, I wanted to make this a bit thicker so I'm actually going to go with three layers. After gluing all these layers together I had some glue squeeze out to clean up and then after that I glued on a strip of solid wood along the front which is going to give a little lip to stop the clamps from falling off. Okay I got them out of the clamps. I trimmed these pieces to length so I've got top shelf, I've got the back, I got the shelf for the clamps. And I've got these two pieces for the ends. And one thing I'm not going to need is any more glue because I'm going to put this together just with screws so that I can take it apart again if I want to change something or if I don't like it. I thought about putting the shelf on top of the plywood, but I think I want it just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to put the shelf here against the top of the plywood. I need a seven inch gap to the clamp shelf so that will put that about there and these are the end pieces and that will go in like this. So I want to cut a little arc here and then I want to cut this at an angle so I'll mark that now and then take that to the bandsaw. I'm just going to trace this stool to get sort of a pleasing curve. I'll take the two pieces together cut them out at the same time.
And then taking the clamp shelf and I'm just marking it to the exact size it needs to be. And I need to not get ahead of myself. I can't put this in until I've got all the slots cut. So now comes the fun part, laying out and marking and cutting all the slots for the clamps. So I want these clamps as close together as possible, but you still need room for getting your hands in. And I want to try and save as much space as possible. So I ended up with a two and three eighths spacing and that's, that's from left side to left side. So I, I guess you could say two and three eighths on center, which is not an even number. So I have to be, whoops, have to be careful with my layout, but it's not precise woodworking. So, I mean, if I have a little bit of creep, it's not going to be a big deal. So actually I think I'm going to cut a spacer. That'll make things a lot easier. All right, I'm back. Here's a nice little piece of wood. It's two and three eighths this way and two and a quarter that way, which matches my plan. So I'm just First marking the left, turning the corner a bit, and then marking the right, and moving along, and should end up with 12, 13, 14. There we go. So I'm going to take this over to the drill press now, and I'm going to drill a 7 16 hole at the end of each slot, and then I'll be cutting it out on the bandsaw to complete each slot. I put the shelf in the front and I used that to mark and then I could drill some marker holes through from the front and then from the back I would know where I could drill my countersinks and be sure that I'm hitting the right spots because of course you got to make sure I'm drilling in between where there's a slot. As much as I'd like to get it hung up right now, I'm going to pause and put on a couple of coats of water-based poly. So two coats of finish are plenty of protection. Just give it a light, light touch with 220, take down any rough spots. but I think it needs a little something else. That with the old. And in with the new. So the Irwin and the Jorgensen fit in there nicely. The old Brooks Stabile there. They also pop in there. Now they have a narrower base, so they wiggle a bit. We shall see. So the idea is that the clamps are loose, but still secure. There's a little lip here in the front, which prevents them from falling, but they're loose so that you just grab one and you can take it off. They're not as secure, obviously, as if they're clamped in place. In my shop, I generally have a bench here. So I, actually I'm reaching over the wall to get at them. So it is highly unlikely that anybody's gonna bump into them. And even if I did bump into them, I, I, don't, think, I don't think they're gonna get knocked down. And yeah, I understand it's odd that this is the broken one. Yeah, this is the one that I replaced. It seemed a good idea at the time, but 
I, I understand. I, I wanted to have a nice rack that starts here and works its way across. And here, I was pretty sure I knew what I wanted, and I was pretty sure I knew it would work. Over there, I still need to figure out how I'm going to work in the quick grip clamps. What am I going to do there? And I need to make an allowance for these clamps. I wondered if they would fit on the shelf here, and they do, but only one. Or, uh, maybe two. That's not good. But regardless, this I think has worked out really well. I'm pretty happy with it. I need to live with it for a couple of days at least before I continue on with anything else. As always, thanks for stopping by and spending some time in my shop. I hope you found something interesting. I will put links to Mark Spagnolo's article down in the description as well. I'll, I'll have some you know rudimentary free plans on my website that you can copy if you want to. Um, and I think that's about it. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you in the next one.